Hello, how's it going? In today's video, I'm covering the New World Tree and the founding of Juratar from Chronicle Volume 3. We've very nearly reached vanilla World of Warcraft stuff, so let's go! In Kalimdor, the Third War had taken its toll on the Night Elves. Nordrasil, which had protected them for thousands of years, was now just a big tree. Nothing special. Its enchantments were gone thanks to Archimond humping it. The Night Elves were subject to aging and disease, again. Plus the Druids now found it a right ball ache to get to the Emerald Dream. However, Archdruid Fandral Staghelm had a plan. Plant a new world tree. I've gotta be honest, seems like Fandral's solution to everything is to plant a new world tree. And it hadn't exactly worked out great the last time, considering Andrasil in Northrend was now just a stump. But the Archdruid felt like he'd learned from his mistakes. Plus there wasn't really much of a choice. Everyone's least favourite storm rage, Malfurion, immediately rejected this plan. Last time you planted a world tree, corruption spread across the land, and everyone went mental, mate. We had to chop it down, you jerk. Fandral was bloody furious. Malfurion was refusing to take the necessary steps to secure a future for their people. Who knows what could be possible with the power of a revitalised world tree. Plus he was kind of hoping he could somehow resurrect his fallen son, Valstan Staghelm. But we'll come back to that. Malfurion was standing in the way of all of it. One night, whilst Malfurion was having a little nap, Fandral ambushed him. The druid fell into a deep coma, and his spirit was trapped within the depths of the Emerald Dream. In the morning, when he didn't wake up, the other druids entered the dream to look for him, but they just couldn't bloody find him. However, most of them were like, yeah, it's probably nothing to worry about. They just assumed he was in there somewhere doing important stuff to try and restore the druid's connection to the ethereal realm and nature itself, or something. In his absence, Fandral took control of the druids of the Cenarian Circle. They headed to the coastal region of Darkshore, where they joined together to plant a new world tree. This one would be called Teldrassil, which means Crown of the Earth, and the Archdruid had indeed seemingly learned from his previous mistakes. This new world tree was bright, powerful, and apparently uncorrupted. The Night Elves rejoiced and established a city called Darnassus. Unfortunately, without the Dragon Aspect's blessing, Teldrassil was vulnerable to the dark influence of the Emerald Nightmare. It wasn't long before the Nightmare seeped into the World Tree's essence, and Fandral went to great lengths to hide this. Why the bloody hell did he do that, you ask? Well, he'd fallen under the sway of Xavius. As a reminder, Xavius was Ashara's trusted advisor. Malfurion had struck him down during the War of the Ancients. Sargeras then tortured Xavius due to his failure before transforming him into a Satya. Malfurion then struck him down again, but never mind that. Nowadays, Ashara and her inner circle obeyed the will of the Old Gods, rather than the Legion. Xavius had become known as the Nightmare Lord and planned to spread the Nightmare all over the place. He'd managed to turn Fandral by exploiting the Night Elf's sorrow over his fallen son. He convinced Fandral that Valstan was still alive, in a similar way to how Nazul had been manipulated. A fake Valstan would appear to Fandral, and he'd be all like, Supra, you should infect the World Tree with the Nightmare's touch or something. And the Archdruid would be all like, well that sounds like a great idea. Unfortunately, Fandral was gradually going a bit mental. It wasn't difficult to keep the Night Elves distracted from this corruption. Not only were Satya and Firbolgs constantly raiding these new Night Elf territories, but the Horde were establishing new nations south of Ashendale. And although they'd been allies by the end of the Third War, they didn't exactly trust the buggers. Meanwhile, Warchief Thrall was pretty pleased with how everything had turned out. They'd helped save the planet. Although the First Horde's crimes would never be erased, this new Horde had at least proven that they deserved to live on this world. After the Battle of Mount Hyjal, Thrall had led his peeps to a desert region on the eastern coast of Kalimdor. He named it Juratar after his father, Juratan. Don't know why he didn't just call it Juratan. Maybe he thought that was a stupid name. They soon forged a new capital in Juratar, and Thrall called this stronghold Orgrimmar, in honour of his buddy, Orgrim. Could have just called it Orgrim. Just saying. Don't have to end everything with R. Although this stronghold would serve as the Horde's capital, some of the faction's other members decided to settle elsewhere. The Darkspear trolls headed south and settled on the Echo Isles. The Tauren established a permanent settlement called Thunder Bluff in Mulgore. Juratar was like the opposite of Mulgore. Mulgore was covered in grass. Juratar was not. The first few years in Juratar were filled with hardship, but Thrall considered this further penance for the damage his people had caused on this world. All of this activity had drawn the attention of Rexar, son of Leorox, Mopnathal, that guy. You remember. He followed the First Horde through the Dark Portal, but had later abandoned them after becoming disgusted with what they'd become. He'd spent the years living alone, learning how to survive and thrive in Azeroth's wilds. He viewed Thrall's Horde as a force of pride and honour, so he cautiously joined them in their new home. As they built their nations, the Alliance refugees in Kalimdor had moved further south. Led by Jaina Proudmoor, they settled in Duswallow Marsh and established a seaside city named Theramore Isle. Jaina and Thrall kept in touch, their uneasy truce gradually became more of a friendship. They declared that they would respect each other's territory and refrain from any acts of aggression, which, as you can probably guess, will last about five minutes in a franchise that's called Warcraft. 
And we're leaving it there. In the next Volume 3 video, Jane is faced with a pretty nasty choice involving her own dad, and the Forsaken join the Horde. As always, thanks very much to those of you who support the channel as patrons. If anyone would like to support the channel in that way, links in the description. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!